Oh, the beautiful sound of a freaking Subaru. Damn, that thing looks clean. Gotta love those gold wheels. What's up, brother? How's it going? Good, man. What is up, guys? Welcome back to the YouTube channel. What we are doing today is throwing air ride or bags, I guess you could call it, on this 2006-2007 Subaru WRX behind me. This thing is gonna look really, really good when it's low. We're doing an air lift 3P suspension with a single compressor, probably a five gallon tank in the trunk. This is how the car looks right now. I believe it's stock height. There may be lowering springs on it. I guess we'll see when we get the shuts off. Um, it's a WRX with an STI wing, the STI little roof vane, STI skirts. Pretty nice highlights on it. He brought me this lip to throw on as well, but that's like an 0405 lip. So stay tuned till the end of the video if you want to win that lip. I originally wasn't gonna film this. It's just a little side project. I rarely, rarely do side projects for anybody, but this guy messaged me. He was local looking for someone to do air ride on his WRX, looking for like a reputable shop. And I didn't know any. So I was like, dude, I'll just do it for you. Bring the car over and I'll bust it out. So I'm pretty pumped. It's gonna look good. I love Hawkeyes, I love WRXs, so I figured I would film this for you because I know all you guys love Subarus as well. All right, the first thing we are going to do is jack the car up in the air, pull the stock wheels off, pull the stock suspension off. There is a special lug key for those that I did not get, so I, th I think I may have one here, hopefully, or else I'll have to jimmy rig something else to get those off. If you guys do want to pick up this, airlift we are throwing on this car which is the airlift 3p suspension i will have it linked down in the description box below go pick it up it is currently the best air ride available for cars in my opinion is airlift 3p or the 3h system i prefer 3p 3h has height sensors which kind of have issues here and there so let's get started guys this thing's gonna look sick um sit back enjoy the video grab a brewski grab a rona it's rona season so yeah let's get started Wheels are off. As far as front strut removal goes, we have two bolts here, both 19 millimeter, a bolt here, 12 millimeter for the brake line or the ABS line and a 12 mil on the brake line as well over there. And then up top, we have three 12 millimeter nuts to pull off and the strut will come off. As far as the rears go, we have the same tour bolts down there, a little clip for the brake line, no ABS line there. But to get to the top three nuts on here, we have to pull out the rear seat, lower section first, then the upper section, and then the three nuts will be right up top up there. All right guys, we got all of these stock suspension off the car. Next thing we're gonna do before we put the struts on, we have to unbox all the stuff and I'm gonna set up all the management, the tank, the compressor before we put the air struts on themselves. Let's go ahead, unbox all this and see what we got. So here is all the air ride suspension components. We have the harness, quarter inch line, water trap drain, the water trap, some more wiring, the manifold, controller, beautiful five gallon air tank, a Viar compressor, some more hoses, a filter, and then those are the rear shuts, those are the front shuts. But to start, we are going to get all of this in the car. He is doing a custom trunk setup. So what I'm doing for him is just getting everything into the trunk, but not mounted because he's just gonna go home and build his own trunk setup. So that'll make it a good bit easier. I am going to be running the controller right next to his access port. So I'm gonna set it up through there. That means we have to pull off all this trim piece here, trim pieces in the back, and it's gonna run all the way to the trunk. So I think the first thing we should do is, let's see, run some wiring. Should we do wiring or should we do 
the airline first. I think we're gonna do the wiring first. So here is the harness. I know that looks like a lot of work, but it's pretty easy, honestly, guys. So I'll kind of show you what we have. The pink wire, that is for a remote turn on. So basically when you turn on the ignition, it'll power the air ride. This USB right here, that goes to the controller. Red wire goes to battery, black wire goes to ground on the battery. These four wires right here are for, if you have the 3H system, those are for the height sensors. We're not gonna be using those. Red wire and black wire here go to compressor. This big plug plugs into the manifold and this relay is already installed. So they can screw that down wherever they want when they build the trunk setup. So I'm gonna get all this in the car. All the wiring on that end has to run up to the front and all of this right here is gonna stay in the back. So like I said, we have to pull off all the trim panels on the driver's side and get all this ran. So it's gonna go right next to the wires for the sound system they had installed in here. So basically under the carpet. To get the two wires to the firewall, there is a rubber grommet. If you go up under the brake pedal, above the brake pedal, there's a little rubber grommet that goes into the firewall. I'm gonna poke a hole in there and run those three wires, power ground, remote turn on through there. Right, we got all the wiring ran throughout the car. The only wires you should have in the back, this plug right here that goes to the manifold. There's two wires here that are gonna connect to the compressor and then this one wire here with the relay on it. And then up front, we ran the USB wire underneath the dash and then out right here, right next to the access port. So that is gonna plug right into the controller and we're gonna be mounting the controller somewhere up in here. And then you'll have three wires that come up through the engine bay. This one is gonna go into the fuse box. We have a red that we have to throw a fuse on and then the black one is gonna go to the ground. Next thing we're working on, getting all the tank fittings on. So we're going off this chart airlift sent over. We're plugging this one here. This one here is gonna go to the water trap, which goes to the manifold. And then the compressor is gonna go in right here. And then the drain is right on the bottom. So that there is the drain. We got the trunk most of the way set up. So black wire goes to black wire on the harness, red to red, of course. We still need to heat shrink those. Every fitting that goes on the tank, we need to use that Teflon tape on. So we still have to do that. But I think the next thing I'm gonna move on to is getting the struts, the air struts on the car. And then after that, we can run all the lines to the back of the trunk. Once again, guys, this is not gonna look pretty whatsoever in this video. Let's go ahead and open up these air struts and we have to kind of assemble, we gotta get the um, lead lines on these air struts. So what are these here? These are rears. So with every strut, we do have a, it's called the leader line we have to put on. That is gonna attach to the bottom of the bag down here. These things go on the same exact way the old ones came off. So they are very, very easy to get on. They don't make it complicated whatsoever. Let's see what side this one here is. This one here is the rear left airbag what's very nice about the airlift shots is they have camera plates front and rear so if we want to slam this car and stance it one day with a wider set of wheels we can definitely do that with the camera plates i'm gonna go ahead and get this leader line installed it screws right onto the bottom of the airbag right there this is gonna just feed right into there and then on the other side we will pull out this bag with the spanner wrench in there and throw one of these fittings on the other side of the airline and the other side is going to connect to this airline which is going to run into the trunk and to the manifold. One more thing we do need to install is this damper, damper adjustment. That guy just sits right on top of the strut here, kind of falls down in there, and then you'll thread it on. And I believe they did send us extenders as well. Yeah, they did, perfect. So we can poke these out the top of the rear seat. Air strut is fully assembled. Let's go ahead and throw this thing on the car. Like I said, guys, these things go on the same exact way that the old ones came off. There are camera plates on top, so I'm gonna leave them right in the center. With these wheel specs, which are 17 by 8.25 plus 35 or something like that, we shouldn't really need any camber at all. Let's throw all the air shuts on, and then I'll show you guys where I'm gonna run all the airlines for this car. All right, the rear suspension is all finished up. One thing you need to do on the front before you put the bags on, if you come under here, there are two bolts. You have to shave those off before you get the airbag on because if you air out with those bolts in there, you will pop the bag, 100%. So go ahead, shave those off, and then we can get the front suspension on. As soon as the front is done, we can run the air lines to the back of the car and see if it works.
All right, we got all of the airlines ran. So the rears come out of the manifold right here and then go into the t spare tire well. And there's a little rubber plug that you can cut a hole in and run them underneath the car. I'll show you guys. I still have to zip tie these up so they're not dragging around, but that's what that looks like. This one here that's not connected to anything is the drain. So when you air out, all the air is gonna come out. That one right there. The fronts run along this side of the car, the driver's side where all the wiring is ran. And then the driver's side goes underneath the car and it'll connect to the leader line right next to where the hard brake line is. And the passenger side comes out that firewall plug, runs up across the strut tower bar, back down to that side and connects right there. The very last thing to do is take out the plugs on the tank, put the thread sealer on them, get them tightened back up and connect the controller and we can see if it... Wait, wait, wait. One more thing we have to do before we connect the controller. We have to connect these two wires to the battery. So the black goes to ground. And before we connect the red wire, we do have to throw in this fuse right here. So that is gonna crimp on, throw the fuse in, and then the other side is gonna connect to the battery. And then we have to figure out a remote turn on for the pink wire. What I'm gonna work on right now though is getting all of these fittings on the tank taped up and sealed so we don't have any leaks. We are gonna check the system to make sure we don't have any leaks before we go drive the car. And how you do that is with just with soapy water, you'll squirt it on that fitting. And if it starts bubbling up, that means it's leaking right there. So I could not find a proper wire for the pink one up in this fuse box here. So I did what I did on my 06 STI I had a few years back. I just went straight to the fuel pump. So that was easy to do, just tapped it in. Very last thing to do is hook up this controller, turn on the car, just turn it, turn on the ignition, and we should hear that pump kick on. If we don't hear the pump kick on, there's something wrong with the system. So let's give it a shot, see what happens. All right, guys, this is it. Controller is plugged in. Hopefully, we got everything hooked up right. Nothing yet. Oh, we got power out the controller. No compressor, though. There we go. Heck yes, guys. Pump is running. Controller is on. Wants me to calibrate the system, which we're not gonna do. Heck yeah. So what I'm actually gonna do on the car right now, just button up the interior. As you can see, it's a complete disaster. Then we can get the wheels on the car. As we're throwing the wheels on, I'm gonna start the car up, just let it run and let that tank fill all the way up so we can put air in the bags, get it on the ground and see how low she's gonna sit. We may have to roll the rear fenders and pull the inner front fender, the front inner fender liners out. I guess we'll see when we get on the ground, but hopefully we don't have to do anything crazy like that. Okay, we got the interior all buttoned up. I'm gonna fire this thing up, let that compressor fill that tank all the way up. And as that's happening, I'm gonna throw the wheels on the car, get it off the jack stands, air all the bags all the way up, get it on the ground. And then we have to set the air out height, the ride height, and adjust all the bags, of course. Calibrate the system. There's quite a bit left to do. Make sure the wheels don't rub on the fenders. Make sure the inner fenders don't need to get pulling out. All right, wheels are on the car. I'm gonna get this thing off the stands. Well, first off, we have to put air in, the air in each bag. Let's go try that right now, actually. Let's see if we can get the bags to air up properly. So you can do each bag separately by just So as you can see, we have quite a bit of air in each bag separately. It already looks like it's gonna be pretty high, honestly. Or, I mean, not high, low. It's gonna be pretty low, um, cause this is aired all the way up and we don't really have all that much gap. So I have to do quite a bit of adjusting on the struts. All right, so we got it off the stands. This is the aired all the way up height. And honestly, it's like 100% stock. You can't even tell I bagged it, but I have yet to go a little bit lower on this thing. So I'm gonna go corner by corner. This is doing the front, as you can see. Fronts are dropping down. Okay, this thing is gonna be freaking low. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that's the front, guys. But well, check out the back. <laughs> That is so freaking low. That's ridiculous. Oh my gosh. I don't, I don't know if you all said that low. 
I'm surprised it's like clearing the fenders though. But look at the mud flaps. That is nuts. I did not think this thing would go that low right out of the box. The front is a bit high. I'm guessing it's probably hitting on the inner fender. So what I'm gonna do right now, air the car back up, probably raise the rear just a little bit and then try to get the front to drop down. And I am going to pull the front three quarters of the inner fender out. So I'll be cutting it right out there to keep all of the junk out of the door jam and then rip the front half of it out or front three quarters of it out. But damn, this thing's looking nuts. It's gonna look so sick when we get this right or this height figured out. Yeah, so I think all the camber is fine all around. There's not really not much camber on it at all, which is what we wanted. I just want the front to be a bit lower and the back to be a bit higher. I don't know, maybe I'll keep it like that. If I can get the front to drop down super low, just in case he wants to go like bagged all the way frick out, then I'll keep the back. But I don't think the front is gonna go that low. So this is as low as the front will go. Two reasons. Number one, it's hitting. There's like this, ow. there's like this body right here that the tire's hitting on and then the axle actually hits the frame as well. So I'm gonna leave that there. I need to do the other side. I'll show you guys what I did. And then the back, we are definitely gonna raise up a bit because the back is quite a bit lower than the front. So I'll probably go up like an inch in the rear. So what we're doing up front is pulling the front half of the fender liner out. So I'm actually cutting it right above this tab right here that runs across. And then we are lowering the strut a total of one inch. That is as low as the front is gonna drop. I tried it a few different times to get it to go lower, but it needs more work. The rear, I am going to raise up just to match the front. Will it even start? I hope so. gonna have his air out a bit higher. Or you need to do mods. Yeah, it's kinda even. It looks so weird on really big tires. Mm -hmm. It looks good though. I think it looks pretty good. Yeah it does. Poor little mud flaps. I know. I can't believe how low it goes in the back. What the hell? Here it is, guys. Turned out pretty sick. So the rear actually has 
the rear bags have 30 psi in them right now because if you drop it all the way down i'll just show you it's stupid low in the back and it just looks weird and that's even after raising it i think we went up an inch in the back it was an inch lower than that when i first put it on so it was like the that the wheel was hidden like really yeah, tucked in yeah it's pretty it's tucking hard so that's what it, look, it just looks dumb, huh? When yeah. it's like that low in the back and not in the front. Well, to some people it's cool, but... Well, you can do it if you want, but... Yeah, so we're just waiting on the dude to show up. Hopefully he likes it. I wish we could go lower in the front, but the, the tire's too big, the axle's hitting, and yeah, that's about it. So <laughs> it needs some serious front modifications. Bobby Wallace approved the full. Can you see me driving this thing? Can I see you driving it? Yeah. I think, I think, I think I like it. No, I think the Forester is more of my module. Oh, man. What do you think? Looks good. The front, so the rear actually goes quite a bit lower. It's yeah. up a little bit right now. The front is completely maxed out. You're gonna, the axles are hitting right now. And then the tires, <laughs> the, yeah, the tires hitting the body as well. And there's wiring up there too, so. Yeah. The Wyme? Mm -hmm. Spoolie? Yeah. Well, is it not stock? No, it is. Okay. Stock turbo. Mm. Sick. Yeah, guys, if you want to pick up this full air ride kit, I'll have a link down in the description box below. And we have to figure out how we're going to do this lip giveaway. I'm just going to give this lip away. I don't yeah. need it. Um, we got. It has to be local, though, too. Mm -hmm. If anyone local wants a brand new 04 to 05 STI lip, the first person, first person, so shoot me a DM on Instagram. You have to be local, I'm not shipping it. Um, come get it, all right? I can meet you in Spokane or whatever. I live way north, but I'll meet you in Spokane if you wanna come get this lip. Or... Wait. <laughs> I appreciate the rumble. Sounds good. Yeah, the first person to shoot me a DM on Instagram wanting this lip, it's yours. I'm not gonna ship it, so, yep. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. The car turned out pretty sick. I wish it could have gone lower in the front. End her out. My <laughs> arms are getting freaking numb. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Peace out. I'll see you tomorrow.